Imagine being the greatest athlete of all times and then you tear your knee. What a shame. All that you would have been, could have been, and were going to be came to an immediate halt. Now, I brought up the fact that there is a thing called CCL, small animal topics, cranial cruciate ligament disease. This disease affects quite a few dogs. Chris Moore sent me this and he said, even in our bulldogs, not only can they have perfect hips, but if this, they have this problem, CCL disease, CCL ligament disease, guess what? Best hips in the world won't stop your dog from tearing its knee. And that's scary. That's scary because I paid for a knee. Guess how much the knee was? $5,000. TV here with Fit Bully TV people. Like, subscribe, and to share with someone who's trying to build a healthy program. Now, I'm just gonna do, it's gonna be brief, okay? Um, so, let's look at the, uh, the cranial cruciate ligament is one of the most important stabilizers inside the canine knee joint. It's parentheses stifle, the middle joint and the back leg. In humans, the CRCO is called the anterior crucial ligament, aka that famous ACL. Ooh, that ACL ain't no, it's no cheese stay, aka no joke. One of the most important stabilizers is your CCL. When it comes to a dog, same thing with humans, <laughs> as far as ACL is concerned. Rupture of the CCL is one of the most common reasons for hind limb lameness, pain, and subsequent knee arthritis. Now, old Arthur comes in a lot of times when there's inflammation in the joint, believe it or not. That's when this, you know, you've got an inflamed joint that's been eaten away at the cartilage or you've been improperly used or you're overweight. And then sometimes there's something called rheumatoid arthritis, which is your luck of the draw, and that sucks. I don't think there's a cure for that one. Now, what are the causes of CCL? Most commonly, CRCLD, which is what they call it, is caused by a combination of many factors, including aging of the ligament, degeneration, obesity, poor physical condition, genetics, genetics, the irony, right? Confirmation, skeletal shape and configuration and breed. Man. 40 to 6 percent of the dogs who have this particular disease in one knee will at some future develop similar in the other knee. Partial tearing, the CCL, is common in dogs and almost always progresses to a full tear over time. What are some of the breeds that this particular study says? Well, it's unfortunate, it is unfortunate when you read this. But you've got your Rottweiler, Newfoundland, Staffordshire Terrier, I hate hearing that, Mastiff, Akita, St. Bernard, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and Labrador Retriever, while others are, lost, are, are less often affected such as the Greyhound, the Duchesson Hound, the Basset Hound, the Old English Sheepdog. A genetic mode of inheritance has been shown in Newfoundland, Newfoundlands and Labrador Retrievers. So again, let me make sure you see this for yourself. What breeds? Small breeds, there we have the Rottweiler, Newfoundland, Stafford, Shire Terrier, Massive, Akita, St. Bernard, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and Labrador Retriever. Guys, feel free to type in. This is the American College of Veterinary Surgeons. Wrote up this article about CCL. Now, why is this important? Because, again, with everybody, you know, I get the question all the time, how much do hips matter? And I'm telling you right now, in humans, if you can protect or strengthen the hips, you can a lot of times prevent knee problems, back problems, uh, ankle problems, etc. It looks like so far, no one's figured out how to prevent this in dogs even when the odds are against you, but if they're calling it disease, disease oftentimes is we consider those plagues. So how do we manage disease? By making sure, sure we're breeding 
I'm not going to say to perfection, but to better the breed, better the program, better the dogs. Now, unfortunately, that's just not going to happen a lot when it comes to the American bully. But something has to be said. So, go read as much as you can about CCL disease. Make sure as you are putting your dog to the test as we have and will continue to do, you're getting an idea particularly of this, this potential issue becoming a huge problem. A huge problem means let's say every dog I keep or every dog that I sell, at some point somebody has to spend three to $5,000 because the knee tore and they were just running around outside. That's not a good thing. You pay me 3,000 uh, for a pet home and then pay 5,000 to solve a knee and you have to pay another 5,000 for the other knee at some point. That right there turns into a what? $13,000 dog. <laughs> and that's scary. Because at the end of the day, 9 out of 10 people do anything they can to keep their dog alive. And if it's just a simple knee problem, that could be to a degree avoided. We just got to do better. Well, we know the better we can be people. T fit here. Like, subscribe, share. Thank you for watching. This is just an awareness video. Better knees, better dogs.